you said in the first century that Mary was unfaithful to you, mm -hmm. right? Did she deal with that emotion at that time, or did it carry through to now? Um, no, she dealt with that emotion at that time, but the memory of that event certainly has had an impact on her now. Because she is now through some more filters of the parents she has this time, yeah. which has uh, caused new emotions for her to deal with. So she has a deep feeling of shame about anything to do with, uh, you know, cheating on somebody or anything like that. She can't even watch the movie that involves it. Right? She struggles mm -hmm. to watch a movie involving it because she has a deep. So she's just blocking them out, isn't she? She's not dealing with it. Well, I can't say what she's dealing with and not dealing with because I haven't seen her for the last three weeks or so, so yeah. I, I can't really say what yeah, she's doing. Yeah, well, you know, three weeks ago, <laughs> everything changes really rapidly on the path, right? And Mary is on the path now. So, so you know, she is dealing with her emotions as best she can at the moment. And I'd probably like to not comment too much about her processing because at some point in time she will want to comment about it. And, uh, and of course, because I haven't spoken to her for some time, it's difficult for me to know the exact emotions that she's going through aside from what I can feel. But the, the thing is that she certainly has some deep shame issues about those events in the first century. And she has been quite upset about them over the last four, four to six months. And she sort of feels like... There's also some anger there too, where she feels like I get to be the nice one, and she gets to be the. <laughs> so there's a, some issues there too. That she, of course, it's totally the opposite of that. Real, in reality, I've had a lot more emotions to deal with this time round than she has mm. to deal with. Mm. But, yeah, but she had lots to deal with in the first century. I haven't watched the DVD. I have heard of it. So does she now know that she is? She knows that I feel she is. There's, there's an issue. Because <laughs> I had heard that she didn't know, so I was just checking. Yeah, on the DVD, when, uh, when that occurred, I'd met her only a, sort of three or four weeks earlier, and uh, she didn't know that I felt she was my soulmate. But what actually happened is, in a very, very roundabout way, her parents found out that I felt that uh, she was my soulmate, and they told her. And I, I was sort of going to wait for quite some time until I felt she was ready to be told. But her parents told her. And she emailed me while I was overseas. The two-line email. Was. <laughs> On February the 14th. Thank you for your see you No, it was... I heard... It was, I loved it, actually. I thought it was great. She said... I heard that you think that we have some kind of soul connection. I would like to investigate this further. <laughs> but I would like to know what you feel about this. Mm. And that was it. Cool. And so um, I emailed her back and then she emailed me and I emailed her back and so forth. And then about a month later she came uh, overseas uh, wow. and caught up and we met up in London. Mm. So we spent a couple of months together uh, yeah, before we got home. But we decided when we got home to be a part so that we could deal with a lot of the emotions that were coming up. Mm. Yeah. Did it feel like old times? Ha ha ha. For me it did, yeah. But for her it felt very confusing. Because she sort of expected to come uh, to England to prove me wrong, and to up to then she hadn't had any memories from the first century, and she felt that uh, she was attracted to me, but she couldn't understand why. But she felt um, that she wanted to resolve it one way or the other, and um, within three or four days she started having memories um, about some first century events. A lot of it was anger with me, actually, <laughs> for leaving her and, and for dying and things like choosing to die and things like that. She knew that I'd made that choice. And when I say choosing to die, it's not like suicide. I, ch I chose to follow a path that would result in my dying and I knew that it probably would. So you didn't move to France and, and have children together? And all that. Uh, we certainly had one child. Yeah, She was pregnant when I died and Sarah, Sarah is that child. And, and she did move to France after my passing. 
and Sarah uh, met up with Luke, her soulmate there in France. But um, yeah, there were a lot of traumatic events that happened after my death for her, for me. And she started feeling all of those first, of course, which meant she started feeling lots of anger and rage towards me um, first. And then she started having quite a number of different memories. And she got to a point where of saturation where she just couldn't cope with any more. And she started detuning after that emotionally. So at the moment, she's sort of trying to work through how come she had those feelings. And how come she had those memories. And she's trying to work out what, what's actually happening inside of herself, you know, whether it's a spirit <laughs> attachment that's feeding her those memories or whether it's a feeling inside of her or whatever. And I've had to work through all of those feelings too, of course. So, so I understand where she's, where she's at. But I just miss her. Mm -hmm. <laughs>